Just a quick heads up, this is not going to be like my other Magu videos where they're highly edited and they have a whole script wrote out beforehand. This is more of a free-flowing discussion, kind of like, I guess, like a podcast style. And without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so I know this is a pretty interesting topic. I mean, I think Mr. Sals has asked about David a lot, and Duani Breed has asked about theories as well. It's pretty interesting, I can't lie, especially this one. This has got to be the most interesting one of all of them. I've been meaning to actually talk about this with you guys for quite a while, but uh, I guess I just never came around to doing it. Anyway, over here, I have the David, let me zoom in over here, prophecy here, which I can't lie, this is probably one of my favorite scenes in all of Magi. It's from a special chapter, if you're curious on what this is, in case, let me zoom back out. In case you don't know what these are, it's from a special chapter. So if you haven't seen it, maybe that's why. It's a very short chapter. I mean, it's literally just like five pages and that's it. Where David basically talks about, just, it's pretty crazy. He talks about seeing the future, his son, how he's kind of like an apostle of God. It, it's a whole thing. And this is the ish, like interesting thing. I have not seen anyone talk about this online. Maybe there are some like old forms somewhere. I mean, in the past, I, I just cannot find anyone talking about this, which is a bit sad. I guess it's because Magi isn't that popular, but it's still, this is a really cool scene and chapter. Or maybe there isn't much to talk about, but there are at least people asking me what this is or what this means. I've been asked that, fair, not too much, but the short, enough people have asked that, you know, I wanted to actually talk about it. So obviously this was, I think if I remember correctly, this was taking place during the Alma Toranach, because as you can see here, everyone's kind of seeing into the vision. And David, through his ability to see into the paths, is watching them in the past. Now, this is pretty interesting. People don't actually understand exactly how this works. Well, if you skim read, skim read it, I guess you wouldn't. I, I did not understand for a long time as well. Because I got this. I kind of skim read for it uh, and some read for it. I, I get another. That's the most important part. Basically, David has the ability to peer into paths, and you could say, uh, no, it is basically seeing into the future. Over here, which is where he discusses it in this godforsaken wall of text. I mean, I guess if you didn't want to read it, I, you know, I've read it quite a lot, and uh, it's not. It's not really complicated, it's more so the actual reading part, you just see a whole bunch of text and you don't really want to read it. I, I don't blame anyone to be honest. But basically, I guess I will, I'll read over it and as we go, I'll basically summarize or explain what's going on. So, in, so I'll start here. Furthermore, I am not the only one. All beings and all phenomenon have a purpose. Even God, what is God's purpose? It is creation. The creation of the world is God's purpose, governing all the world's phenomena. Phenomena, sorry. Creating the world and maintaining its movement are God's purpose. And as one who stood at God's side, that was my purpose too. There was only one path I could choose. So basically, he's just. This is the start of the rant. Dear God, I, there isn't much to explain here. It's kind of self explaining. It's kind of like the introduction to his ramblings i guess i best way to say it so the second paragraph therefore i fought but against what did i fight my opponents were not the other races but all the few magicians who opposed the church or magic it was my own lifespan magic the magicians possess infinite potential but their lives are finer and brief basically this is where he, he's basically saying i want to live forever but people were making fun of him but obviously he didn't care. Like the reason he wants to live forever is so he can carry out his mission, which is, I guess, that is a complicated question right there. Cause he's saying he has all this power, potential and knowledge and it's pointless if you're just gonna die. I just mean, kind of makes sense, but he's not striving for immortality or eternal life because he's scared of death. Actually, he's not scared of death. He accepts death 
as we saw in the Amatornok when he dies. He, he, what he wants is something more than that. It's pretty crazy. He's a pretty interesting character. He is god complex. I don't know. I mean, is it even a god complex? He becomes god. It's not really a complex, is it? Yeah, that's an interesting way to think about it. So the next paragraph, thus I strove to fulfill my purpose using the towers to conquer the... So this other paragraph, there isn't much here. He's just saying he was just being a jackass, pretty much. And then I had a son. This too was inevitable for the creation of a new world. See, this is the interesting part. He knows this because he can peer into the future. So he knows what having his son, of course, Solomon, is going to be doing for the future and as we'll see later on he talks about how it's fate and how it's destined to be which is pretty cool someday he will oppose me and i will fall before him yet i do not fear for all this fate then he will succeed me and advance the world into a new stage so here's where we kind of get a glimpse of him seeing the future which i mean we already saw in the previous panel where he's literally looking into the future but this is kind of like the first understanding because he's literally prophesizing his own death and how he dies and even far beyond that it's because he can see into the past that will be explained in the second page my son is not a singularity my blood rain but my blood runs in his veins i'm trying to kind of speed run through this like maybe i should and if fate has chosen him to play a role surely he can understand my words for while he may not notice it himself he is capable of understanding that's pretty interesting actually so it shows that even if you aren't a singularity you can still if it's explained to you you can still go against destiny and fate i mean which we already saw in the armatoran arc of solomon so i mean i guess being a singularity is what allows you to actually break that fate it's all actually quite interesting because solomon was manipulated by david into becoming god it's kind of crazy like seriously this is some eisen level planning but on absolute like steroids like thousands of years of pre-prep just to become god and it works that's the craziest part so where were we yeah here we go then the true singularity that gives birth to the world to the new world will reach the miracle at the end of fate's unimaginable trajectory so basically he's saying through all of this through him dying his son taking over and making a new world he's saying later on in this new world there's going to be another singularity who's going to pretty much do do what he's meant to do how do i explain this so he's saying the next singularity is going to do what he wants like all of this planning that he has for solomon to make a new world is going to lead to the creation of a new singularity which is Sinbad, by the way. And with that happening, then his plan can commence, which is him becoming God, which is the final arc. So he knew this from the very beginning. He knew all of this. And the true utopia will come into being. So this is obviously him becoming God. You know, that's what he's referring to here. It will be a stunningly beautiful world. And that is when I will stand beside God and surpass God and fulfill my mission. Now, when he's referring to God, does he know that it's Ugo or Yugo? How would he say his name? Probably so, since he can see the future. So it's pretty interesting, but regardless, this does happen. He stands beside God, he surpasses God, and he, I guess he fulfills his mission, but then he's defeated. But for a while, yeah, he won. So then the first page, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty much <laughs> like a prophecy. He's prophesizing exactly what happens, which is why it's called David's Prophecy. So the next one, I have a son in 800 years, so, okay, he's just predicting the future, 800 years in the future. I have never wished to leave behind a descendant, but having a child at this time was inevitable, so refusal was impossible. All unfolds according to fate. So this is kind of where the depression, the mania, the craziness of David is about to come in. Fate. The result of the many, oh sorry, the many fold pathways and phenomena. I don't know why for a moment, I just, my brain's still working. Of the world before my eyes. This child and his birth are also nothing more than one among many such phenomena. So this is kind of the issue that most people have, especially Sinbad, that people have. How everything is going according to fate, how you can't control fate, how you can't oh i'm sorry not Simba. i meant solomon how this is how like the big issue he had with it so it's funny because david and solomon both 
you know, they were against each other. David was an evil guy. He's very evil, actually. But they, they did have the same goal as the, or, and like ideals. I don't know how to explain that. But basically, what they wanted was the same. They both don't like this fate or this destiny that's controlling everyone. Right? And that's what he's saying here. This is where the rest second page basically is talking about how I'll get into it now, but he does not like this idea of fate. How, why does he have to suffer, right? How he's fate to suffer. It'll make sense once I read this. The future is invisible. No matter how advanced magical uh, technique becomes, it will never be able to peer into the future. However, that is unnecessary. You strain your eyes to see the pathways of the world and notice the laws and interconnections of all things. The events of the future unfold inevitably. How strange is it that no one notices this? So pretty much you can see destiny and fate and how things are going to turn out, which is interesting. So see, this makes me wonder. Solomon, at least from, because it's been a long time since I've read Bongi. If I remember correctly, I thought Solomon removed fate and removed destiny. Yet the fact that he is able to see into the future the pathways of the world, he's able to see what's happening. So basically, Almatoran, even beyond that, so like with Sinbad and everything happening there. Does, doesn't that mean that all of that was fated to happen already, since he can see it through the pathways of the world? That is something I'm, that is something I'm actually a bit confused. I can't tell if that's, it's probably not a plot hole. There probably is an explanation to it that I'm just not getting. But, I mean, maybe he's able to peer into the future, even though the future's not fated. Like, that, that's not right, though. So, is he peering into a future that already exists when it hasn't happened? That's fate, right? Who knows? I, if anyone wants to explain that one, be my guest, yeah, please. So the next part, I, alo I alone understand this. No, perhaps another among this world's many intelligent species has noticed one who has noticed this world gave birth to a singularity however the other can no more interfere influence oh, sorry i don't know why i'm just i guess it's because the, okay, the quality is a bit bad so that's that's also why no more influence this world than those who do not notice and must therefore disappear from this world so basically here he's saying actually let me just continue there's a reason i noticed the reason a magician like me who could do so is because god bestowed a godlike power upon me and I stood by God's side. This is not pleasant for me. It only brings despair and loneliness. Can anyone understand the solitude? It, no, it is the solitude of becoming alienated from everyone in the world. So this is kind of where he loses his mind. I mean, he's seeing the future. He's the only one who can see the future as well. And he's being a singularity. He's not influenced by destiny. And that kind of leads him to insanity or depression, or both honestly so that's kind of what we're seeing here despair loneliness solitude and this is what led to david having this god complex which ended up eventually ends up not being a complex because he becomes god at first i despise god why must i be the one who sees the limits of the world when my emotions view wait okay i think this translation what is the translation when my emotions view with despair all that the world has to offer how okay that translation you know what moving on that was a pretty rough translation i'll just move on for it got emotion what is emotion it is the product of ignorance so hmm i mean i guess i don't blame him for coming to this conclusion like he is a singularity the things he's seeing it kind of leads to Man, this guy needs to see a psychiatrist. This guy needs to see a therapist. With all that's happening here, this man needs mental help. It, it, he loses his mind. Is pretty much what we're seeing here. And he, and along with emotion. So that's why when he dies, he's kind of chilling because he already knows everything that's going to happen. I mean, when you know literally everything that is going to happen, I mean, how can you feel anything anymore, right? You know literally everything. So I guess it's understandable actually why his emotions are cut off and why he becomes kind of a socio-psychopath, right? Because my guy just knows everything. And then, um, here we go. Emotion is what happens when those who cannot see the trajectory of fate 
are tossed about, encounter hidden turns and stumble along the path. Such vagaries will never again touch me. So basically saying, people feel emotion because obviously they don't know what's to come. So, you know, things happen you don't know about. You become happy, sad, depressed, stressed, you become joyful. I mean, anxious, all these crazy things, this doesn't apply to him because he already knows everything that's going to happen. So he can't really feel anything anymore because anything that will happen, he already knows. Which over here is what he's saying, because he is the only one who can see this. He is the only one who, can, who will suffer like this. How have I noticed even more? If all the world's phenomena are inevitable, then so is my own existence. The existence of a singularity is also necessary to the world, and thus my understanding expanded. I had a mission, I existed in order to fill a grand task. And that is kind of the end of that. And then we have, at the end of it, it closes the book. So it's kind of a cleaner... Uh, what is it called? Scan here. I have two versions, but uh, still, this one. Uh, they're, they're both good. They're both good. This one has more detail, but this one looks better. That's just my opinion. He closes the book, fixes his hair, and he's like, "Yep, that's a job well done." So I guess that's David's prophecy explained, right? He is very interesting. I think David is, uh, by all means, crazy. <laughs> But you can see after reading this and his thought process, it makes sense. This guy cannot experience any emotions anymore because, I mean, he knows everything that is going to happen. And there was also this translation, it is higher quality, of course, but the actual quality of the writing I don't think is as good as this one's. And there's also obviously these where David is chilling with God and seeing the future, which is kind of crazy. He saw all of this thousands of years ahead of time in another world. But yeah, that's I guess that's David's prophecy. Explain. 